how lucky I am at the age of 72 still to enjoy teaching English and to have children to teach who, by the progress they are making, confirm ideas I've been working on for four decades. It's some of these ideas I want to share with you. And here's the main idea. The best window on the logic of a foreign language is a naturally acquired language, usually the mother tongue. It's the greatest asset any human being brings to the task of learning a foreign language. And that's why we should treat the mother tongue as a powerful ally and not as an error-generating enemy or as non-existent. Because with the proper mixture of monolingual and bilingual techniques, we can revolutionize the teaching of beginners. Remember that the conventional mother, mother tongue taboo has a price. It's the thin language soup served up to beginners. The NAF content of many texts for beginners is due to an overemphasis on lexical and grammatical grading. And this in turn is a side effect of uh, the monolingual approach. You simply must grade your language material carefully if you want to explain things monolingually. And this is why uh, conventional grammatically graded texts seriously under challenge beginners. Why not use a past tense form or a future form uh, in the very first English dialogue? Didn't we all learn the ideas of uh, pastness or future time roughly at the age of three? So my primary school children can easily handle will, shall, uh, should, could, may, or constructions such as for plus noun plus to infinitive. I mean forms and functions that are usually offered later in the course. Let's take a song, an authentic text like Yellow Submarine. In the town where I was born lived a man who sailed the sea. Now you've got the past tense, you've got the passive voice, you've got uh, a relative clause. No problem, no problem, because both lexical and grammatical meanings can be easily and effortlessly conveyed via the sandwich technique, that is, via the mother tongue. Children can handle such authentic texts and also uh, the texts that you can see in the video, the sketches. And these sketches um, have the, uh, uh, the communicative creativity and the sophistication which all children possess in their mother tongue. They exploit this communicative creativity and sophistication. Children can cajole, comfort, protest, lie or flatter, just as we do. And they enjoy giving these sketches a personal voice and a personal presence by acting it out, acting them out in, in, in their own fashion. And if rightly taught, they can actually perform these sketches with verve and gusto. At the same time, these sketches, these dialogues, provide the children with uh, useful phrases and productive patterns which they can adapt to their own communicative needs. Now this is what they really want, the language of human relations. Uh, but what all children, all primary children, usually get is the names of colours and animals in the zoo.
is she pretending? This is Kay, this is Mommy. <laughs> Mommy, my head aches. My throat hurts. Can I stay in bed today? Maybe you got an English test today. I think you should go and do the test. Mommy, I'm not pretending. I'm suffering. I'm dying. Oh well, darling, I made you a herbal tea. The last time, it's time for Betty to go to bed. May I sleep in your bed tonight? No, you may not. Why not? Oh, please! But it's the last time. <coughs> please carry me. But I will do my paper. Oh, I give up. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Daddy. There's always one more time. Head boy? Me? <laughs> I can't do that. Why not? I support you. We work for you. Think of the work. Think of the responsibility. Think of the power. I'll do it. Head girl? Me? I can't do that. Why not? I support you. We work for you. I think of the work. Think of the responsibility. Think of the power. I do it. We all live in the yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. We all live in the yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. Yellow submarine. Mastery is achieved through a judicious mixture of monolingual and bilingual techniques as described in our book The Bilingual Reform, A Paradigm Shift in Foreign Language Teaching. Without these techniques, beginners can't access these texts readily. Learner-friendly and brain-compatible techniques such as, for instance, the special use of the printed word are necessary to help beginners cope with these linguistically demanding texts. Because I use the printed word, the printed text, right from the start in a very special way in the presence of a clear and strong auditory image, I can regularly use Michael West's read and look up technique for consolidation. It's a central teaching technique Pupils practice a text while milling around in the classroom and interference from the printed text, that is, mispronunciations, are kept at a minimum. Everyone is active at the same time, but at their own pace. They are kept on their toes and they like it. Oh, well.